So today I'm going to show you some of the hurdles I faced installing solar panels on this 1948 Greyhound bus. So now that I got the solar panels mounted on the roof, this is where I'm basically calling my command center. The old electrical system used to be here. You can see I've gutted pretty much all of that out. Um, but here are the couple of controllers that I'm going to have. So this turns on the Renergy 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Uh, i got a battery monitor here and then the Adventurer 30 amp solar charger uh, also from Renergy. So I went with all their stuff. Uh, they got pretty good reviews. Uh, should be more than enough electric that I need. I got three batteries down below. Um, right here is where we used to control shore power and uh, generator power switching back there. So that's coming out. Uh, but you can kind of see where I came through the roof with my power wires. So I got them coiled up in there now and get them hooked up soon. I think I'm going to utilize some of this space up here for the fusing. I got some fuses to put in for the panels and for the inverter. Uh, and then mount these controllers up here. Kind of, I think this one's going to go here and then the other two kind of like that there uh, right next to it. So this is the bay I've chosen for the batteries for my solar system. Uh, I've got my water tanks in here, my black water, uh, water heater. So this is kind of turning into all the essentials in one area. This little kick out that you see was originally an air duct for the pony motor on the basement air. And you can see it has kind of a, a draw from back there and another great opening here. Somebody had put this brace in here and uh, there was a Onan generator in here that I pulled out. <gasps> And that's where the battery sat for the starter. So that's gonna come out too. And I'm gonna plug these holes here in the floor. And in the process of pulling that little 45 degree mess out of there to really utilize that space. Up until now, it's just in the way. So don't need it anymore for the generator. So it's coming out. All right, we got the pieces all cut out that were in there. Actually, I'm surprised they were still holding, at least this grate here it was really just zip tied in there. Uh, but I ended up having to drill out all the screws. I got all them out. I'm just gonna get a couple pieces of aluminum to fit and fill these voids. Here's the other side of it. So there's still pretty good structure there uh, all the way across that back section there's a lip big enough to rivet a new piece of metal in um, <laughs> Starting over here, there is a fuse.
that is on the hot side of the battery bank down here before it enters my inverter up here. And I've tapped off the hot side of that fuse into a 50 amp circuit breaker here. And that gives me a 12 volt panel upstairs. So I have 12 volt lighting and I have lighting off of the 120 on the inverter. Well, that was just kind of how I chose to tap into that service. Back over there in the corner, I've got a battery monitor. So here's the shunt trip part of the battery monitor installed. And here you can see what I call my electrical center where I charge batteries and plug different things in. I've got a cell phone booster in there. Uh, these are my two panels. The upper one my 12 volt. My lower one is 120 off the inverter. You can see I got these A and L fuses protecting everything between the panels and the controllers. And we got a 100 watt flexible panels, two of them there installed. And here you can see the final product of my command center. So you can see I got the switch for the inverter on top, my battery monitor in the middle, and the solar charge controller at the bottom. And this it really worked out pretty good. It was a better location than before because I can see this from the front of the bus so I don't have to get up on it to understand what's going on so it's been very good uh, I appreciate you guys taking a watch if you please subscribe it'll really help me out and stay tuned for some more